Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're doing another Q&A video today. Uh, somehow the last one we did was four or five months back. And I really want to do more of these videos, but somehow I just never end up planning for them in advance. And so they never end up happening. So I put up a story on Instagram recently. And in today's video, I'm going to answer some of the most common questions and the interesting ones that you guys asked me there. And yeah, with that, let's begin. So the first question that I'm going to talk about is literally the most asked question that I got in this Q&A. 50% uh, of questions were actually some form of this particular one. It says, when are the planners going for pre-booking and what else are you launching? Okay, so a lot is happening on the planner front and I just want to take two minutes and sort of explain to you guys what is happening. Uh, so yes, I am launching my planner for 2020 this year like I did last year. And the planner that I'm making this year is literally one of the best things I've ever created. I'm so proud of it. I took all the feedback that I got for my last year's planner and I've implemented every single thing in this year's planner. So you guys can be sure that whatever I'm putting out is going to be my best work so far. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. My team and I were working really hard on the planner and we hope to launch it around end of November. That would be the ideal date that we're targeting. So hopefully if everything goes to plan, we will be launching by the end of November. Apart from the planners, we're also doing a series of other products like journals, to-do lists, uh, notepads, notebooks, and a lot of other life organizers, so to say. And all of them are very scientifically designed, like a lot of research is going into creating every single word that is going into that planner. So yeah, a lot of effort, research, like a lot of hard work is going into making all of these. These are all products that I have never seen in the Indian markets. These are all, um, I don't know, like I've never come across something similar. These are just like brainchilds of uh, brain children of our team and uh, super excited for whatever's coming out. I'm very sure you guys will really enjoy the products. In the upcoming videos, I will definitely give you guys sneak peeks of all of these products as and when they get ready. And I'll also try and vlog the whole process so you guys know what went behind making all of these things. So yeah, that's what is happening on the planner front. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am for the products. So the next question that I have is, how much to charge for a brand sponsorship? Your suggestion would help a lot of young bloggers and YouTubers. I think this is a very important and very relevant question for young YouTubers and bloggers. And if you go back and look at a, a, a video that I made almost about one and a half years back, you guys will see that I was also talking about exactly the same things, how much to charge, how to charge. We, we're all confused about this because there's no industry standard that exists. And, it is a very unasked question in the community as well. So we don't know what is the right amount to quote to brands. Okay, so here's how I deal with brands. I don't charge one flat fees for all the brands. It completely differs from brand to brand. It differs on the kind of deliverables they're looking at. Are they looking at just YouTube or are they also looking at Instagram? I also consider if it's a really big brand, if it's a small brand, if it's a startup, or can they actually afford to do, spend a lot on marketing right now? I also care about how often have I've been using this brand if it's a brand that I've been meaning to work it work with for a very very long time then of course like uh, my bargaining power sort of comes down so there's, there are a lot of factors to consider here uh, the ideal rate I, I'm not sure exactly how to give an answer to this because there is no ideal rate as such but a lot of you know theories float in the industry so a lot of really big youtubers that I've spoken to have told me that you know a sort of like a standard is that you charge one rupee for each view that you can guarantee to that brand so if you can if in your head when you're uploading a video you'll have an idea of how many views that particular video can garner right so for example if i do a food video i know it gets more views than my non-food videos because you guys love watching food videos so um, when i do that uh, i know if i'm collaborating with a food brand i have a higher bargaining power because i tell them listen my food videos get a lot of views so the typical rate that a lot of people have told me about like very senior youtubers is that you charge one rupee for each view that you can guarantee at the moment but i don't agree to this rule 100 percent nor do i stick to it at all points because you know sometimes we offer a lot more value than just one rupee per view the video that you're creating is going to be there on YouTube forever. It's going to be there. Um, it's, it's something very permanent that you're offering to the brand. You're attaching your own credibility with that of the brand. So uh, it's, it's 
I think it needs to really come from you. Like, how much do you value your content? How much? Where do you see yourself in the whole like sort of system? So, what I charge brands typically ranges a lot from uh, the least I charge at this point, so somewhere around two and a half lakh subscribers and a little bit of followers on Instagram. I my range is. the lowest i would charge from a startup brand or a brand that does not have a lot of money to spend right now would possibly be around 35 40000 rupees and it can go up to as high as a lakh and a half or 2 lakhs per video it completely depends on how big or small that brand is and in a way most of the brands that i work with are brands that i genuinely really want to work with say date do lakh wala range i don't end up hitting that often so i am typically in the in somewhere in this range mostly towards the lower end never towards very rarely towards the high end now the next question that i have is three things that you want to do before 2020 by the way love you a lot thank you so much that's really sweet and the question is also very relevant honestly i want to do a lot more than just three things before uh, 2020 begins uh, so that's why i started a campaign on instagram which is called 100 deeds to 2020 we have almost around 100 days left in this year and i thought it will be a really nice idea for me to share one small little action positive action that we can take every day towards our mental health our goals and things like that just to make us really positive and excited before we venture into the new year and i am sharing one deed that we can all do together uh together and sort of you know feel better about that particular day so i'm doing this campaign on instagram right now i'm sharing one deed every day and to go with that i'm also sharing one tip one adulting tip which can help you achieve your goals and dreams faster so if you'd like to be a part of this campaign if you'd like to join us in this journey of doing 100 things before 2020 begins make sure that you follow me on instagram you'll find all of the information there already and yeah looking forward to have more of you join me on this campaign now the next question i have is how can you manage your responsibilities in career and as a wife homemaker okay quite an interesting and relevant question and i don't think i have an answer to this right now because i don't know if i'm managing all my responsibilities well but uh, you know i now do have a full time job so to say because even though i work from home uh, now that i have a team and we have regular office hours everyone comes down i don't have all the flexibility that i had before of you know working whenever i felt like working late in the night or early in the morning as per my convenience so um, yeah there are fixed hours and i have to stick to it and i obviously also have to do ghar ka kaam so um, i am honestly able to manage all the responsibilities to whatever extent i'm managing right now because i have a very very understanding husband he helps me out with literally everything the way we've divided our chores in the house is that paritosh loves doing any other kaam but he does not enjoy the process of cooking he just enjoys eating and i love cooking and i don't like doing any other kaam ghar ka so uh, yeah it's been actually very easy for us that's how we've split all of our responsibilities i cook and take care of all of the cooking related uh, things and paritosh takes care of everything else that needs to be done so he manages uh, shopping and he manages anything else that we have to do like ironing clothes and lot of other you know the kind of things that one has to do a uh, ghar pe so he manages all of that so yeah so far it's been a pretty okay system for both of us because we both get to do things that we enjoy and uh, and we also have a house help domestic help so uh, we're lucky enough to be able to afford domestic help right now so uh, things are a lot easier with her presence because uh, you know like it just becomes easier because both of our jobs are so so demanding that we always find it very difficult to end up doing all of these things together and still keep ourselves sane like i keep my mental health and and my self care thing i make it a priority so for me like it's it's really nice like honestly i personally believe that it's nice for me to get some me time and if i don't have my domestic help probably i will never be able to find that me time so very very grateful for being able to afford a, a house help right now uh, now the next question that i have is some netflix recommendations for beginners okay um i love watching tv series and web series of any kind so i'm so happy that somebody asked this question but i'm not going to restrict myself to just netflix because i think we have so many platforms right now and all the platforms has have such amazing shows that it seems a little unfair ki you know i should like just talk about netflix i'm going to cover tv i'm going to cover amazon prime i'm going to cover netflix and hotstar and everything that's out there so i would want to recommend shows in three categories first are your typical like 
big budget network TV shows that are super popular. We've all grown up watching them. In case you've missed out, I'll speak about some of them. And then I'll talk about like some really interesting shows that the giants like the Amazon Prime or Netflix are creating or HBO. And then I'll talk about some chotu motu web series that I find here and there, which are absolutely worth your time. Okay, so in the first category, I'm going to talk about the big ones. So of course, there's Big Bang Theory and there's Friends and there's Two and a Half Men and The Middle and uh, all of these like big names that you would have already heard. I also love Game of Thrones. Uh, I love um, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is amazing, guys. Like it's literally, if I have to pick my one favorite at this point, I will say it's Silicon Valley. Highly recommend it. I would also recommend Suits. I will recommend The Good Wife. I will recommend Dr. House. Um, okay, there are quite a lot of them. I'll, I'll try and leave a few more in the description or somewhere. I don't know, like there are so many, I cannot think of all of them right now. And then moving on to second category, we have our uh, Amazon Prime and Netflix and you know, those kind of platforms. So there I absolutely love watching, uh, you know, Family Man has come up recently on Amazon Prime videos. It has Manoj Bajpai. It is absolutely worth your time. Like I would highly recommend you guys to watch it. I'm not sure how many of you have watched Made in Heaven, but Made in Heaven is a beautiful, beautiful series. Like it's a 10 series uh, season and it's so beautiful. It's made by Zoya Akhtar. So uh, I'm sure you will not regret watching it even for a second. Uh, we also have, um, I also really enjoyed watching Sacred Games uh, season one. I didn't like season two so much. I also like Mirzapur. So all of the really cool stuff that's happening on all these platforms, I do enjoy watching that as well. And then for Chotu Motu shows, you, now it's not Chotu Motu anymore, but uh, I loved Kota Factory, which was on TVF. Oh my God, it was so beautifully made, guys. Like I did not even prepare for IIT. I did not have anything to do with Kota, but it was such a beautiful show. Highly recommend you guys to watch it if you haven't. I would also recommend you guys to watch Little Things if you haven't already. I'm sure a lot of you would already have because they've become a huge show now, uh, getting their second season on Netflix and stuff but um, beautifully made episodes, really, really realistic, very lovely acting by both Mithila Palkar and Dhruv. Um, absolutely love it. Highly recommend you guys to watch it. And um, in the second category, I forgot talking about this one, but I would also recommend you guys to watch Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's a show that's set in a, around 50s ka era where this one girl is trying to become a stand-up comic. Super funny, very, very edgy good music, great music, please watch it, highly recommend. Do let me know if you guys would like me to talk about TV shows more often, maybe I can do a roundup every month, share some of my favorite ones that you guys can watch and uh, enjoy and make some <laughs> good use out of your time. Uh, I would love to do that and I, I do watch a lot of these shows but I'm always very confused whether you guys will want to watch it or not. So let me know if you guys would want me to do something like that in the comment section below. So I had picked out a couple more questions in my phone but I feel like this video has already gotten too long so I'm going to stop here and uh, let me know if you guys enjoy watching Q&A videos. I can do them more often, I can do more Q&As, I can get a host another one on YouTube and get some questions from you guys as well. Whatever it is let me know in the comment section below and I will see you next time in my next video. Bye!